Chapter Eight of Kari the Elephant by Dan Gopal Mukherjee. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Adrian Pretzelis. Chapter Eight, Kari and the Quicksand. Although elephants are very unselfish animals, they behave like human beings when brought to the last extremity. The following adventure will show you what I mean. One day Kari and Kopi and I went to the river bank to help pull a big barge up the river. The tow men could not pull the ropes hard enough to make progress against the current. All that they could do was to stand still without getting ahead at all. So word was sent on to us, and we three went to help out. I harnessed Kari to the tow rope. It was very amusing, as he had never pulled a weight in his life. At first he pulled very hard. The rope almost broke, and the barge swayed in the water, almost toppled, and then drifted to its previous position. The swift current was going against it, and the people in the barge were shaking their hands and swearing at us, as though they were afraid that the vessel would capsize. Kari didn't care. After he had pulled the barge about two hundred yards, he stopped. The rope slackened, and then the current pulled against us. The rope became taut again, and the men shrieked from the barge. When you tow a boat, you must not jerk at the rope, but pull it gently. So I urged Kari to pull it smoothly, and in the course of an hour, he had actually drawn the boat in, and, at the end of our journey, he had learned to pull evenly. After that we went on playing on the river bank. Kopi jumped off the elephant's back and ran along the shore. I urged Kari to follow him, and as we kept on going I lost all sense of direction and trusted to the intelligence of the animals. The monkey, however, had led us into a trap. We had run into quicksand, and Kari began to sink. Every time he tried to lift his feet he seemed to go deeper into the mud, and he was so frightened that he tried to take hold of the monkey with his trunk and step on him as something solid. But Kopi chattered and rushed up a tree. Then Kari swung his trunk around pulled down the mattress from his back, and, putting it on the ground, tried to step on it. That didn't help, so he curled up his trunk behind to try to get me to step on. Each time he made an effort like that, however, he sank deeper into the mud. I saw the trunk curling back and creeping up to me like a python crawling up a hillside to coil around its prey. There was no more trumpeting or calling from the elephant, but a sinister silence through which he was trying to reach me. He had come to the end of his unselfishness. In order to save himself, he was willing to step on me. The monkey screamed from the treetop, and I, jumping off the elephant's back, fell on the ground and ran. Kari kept trumpeting and calling for help and by this time he was chest-deep in the mud. The rear of him had not sunk so far, so he was on a slant, which made it all the more difficult for him to lift himself. I ran off to the village and called for help. By the time we got back with ropes and planks he was holding his trunk up in order to breathe as the mud was up to his chin. There was only one thing to do and that was to lift Kari by his own weight. So we tied the rope to the tree and flung it to him. He got it with his trunk and pulled. The rope throbbed and sang like an electric wire, and the tree groaned with the tension. But all that happened was the elephant slipped forward a little, and his hind legs fell deeper into the mud. Now he was perfectly flat in quicksand. 
but something very interesting had taken place. Now that he was holding on to the rope with all his mortal strength, we knew that he would not let go of it, so it was easy to go near him and put planks under him, as the hind part of his belly had not yet sunk to the level of the mud. At last he stopped sinking. But as we could not put the planks under his feet, it only meant that he would not go further down and smother to death. Now that his head was lifted, and there was an opening between him and the mud, the question was how to lift the front part of his body so that he could drag the rest of it out. Another elephant had to be called in. It turned out to be Kari's mother, who had been given to a neighbouring king. By the time she arrived, however, dusk had fallen, and nothing could be done. We trusted to God, and left him to his quicksand for the night. The next morning we found Kari in the same position as the previous evening. He had relaxed his hold on the rope, but had not sunk deeper. We had to put more planks all around him, but he now knew that he should not attack anybody, because we were trying to save him. After the planks had been tested, his mother went up to him. She put her trunk around his neck, and started to lift him. But he groaned with pain, for he was being smothered. He began to sink again, and we just had time to put some more planks between his chest and the mud. We also had slipped a rope under him, which some men in a boat near the river bank came up and threw over his back. The hosier was made into a loop around his body, and the other end was tied around the mother. Then she pulled with all her might, and her strength was so great that his forequarters were lifted up and his small legs dangled in the air. He was pulled forward quite a distance when the hosier broke, and his forelegs fell on the plank. His hind legs now were sinking, and we were terribly frightened. We felt as if we had lost him again. The situation was not as bad as we thought, however, as it was very easy to slip another hosier under him. This time we made a double loop around him, and also made him hold on to the rope around the tree with his trunk. He was very tired, but I urged him to obey me, and now, with the aid of his mother, he managed to lift the rear half of his body and put first one leg and then the other on the plank. A great shout of joy went through the crowd as Kari walked on to solid ground. That instant the monkey jumped down from the tree and fell on Kari's neck. He was very glad to see his friend safe again. But Kari was in no humour for anyone's caresses and he shook Kopi off. The very first thing I did was to pull some branches from a tree, which Kari devoured hungrily. A hungry elephant is not to be bothered by anyone. I'd learned my lesson. I would no longer take my elephant anywhere and everywhere at the behest of the monkey, for monkeys have no judgment. End of chapter 8